Hi guys, glad you're here this morning. Let's stand up and get ready to worship. Silly string, too. Hey, Ollie. I love silly string because it starts with the letter S. Silly string starts with S. It's true. I have another word that starts with an S for you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Hoo, hoo. Follow me through. Follow me through. and welcome to my 
my cupcake food truck. Do you want to see what I've cooked up today? Ta-da! <laughs> these are my S's for Shepherd's Cupcakes. Aren't these little sheep so cute? I made them because today we are hearing the next part of the Christmas story and there are shepherds in it. Are you ready for a story? If you're ready, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. The true story of Christmas happened many years ago when Jesus was born. Now, because Jesus is God's son, you would think that he would be born in a special place like a castle. And there would be a big party with confetti and lots of people there. But is that what happened? Is that where Jesus was born? No! Jesus was born in a stable in the town of Bethlehem. There wasn't a party, but there were some animals. And the only people there were Mary and Joseph. Do you think that is the end of the Christmas story? <laughs> no! God wanted everyone to know that his son Jesus had been born. That night, there were shepherds in a field. S is for shepherds. Everyone say, S is for shepherds! S is for shepherds! Now, what do you think a shepherd's job is? They watch over some kind of animal. Do they take care of giraffes? No! Do they take care of frogs? No! What do shepherds watch over? <laughs> sheep! That's right! What sound do sheep make? Bah! Bah! Yes! Good sheep! Wait! Look! <gasps> What's happening? It's an angel! An angel appeared in the sky and said to the shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy. Jesus is born. Then suddenly, the whole sky was full of angels who started praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. When the shepherds heard this, they ran to find baby Jesus. When they found him, they were amazed. They wanted everyone to know that Jesus had been born. So they ran and told everyone that God gave us Jesus. And that's how we know God loves us. God gave us Jesus. Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Hey there, Ollie. Tell me, how do we know God loves us? God gave us Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, how do we know God loves us? God gave us Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there is your story, and it's all true. The shepherds told everyone about Jesus because Jesus came for everyone. Who? Who? Thanks, Sally. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? The shepherds were so excited when they saw baby Jesus, they told everyone that God gave us Jesus. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say, got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Now we know a super sensational word that begins with the letter S. Shepherds! It's almost time for my PJ party. I can't wait to be like all the shepherds and tell everyone how God gave us Jesus. Merry Christmas! God has given a son to us, Isaiah 9, 6. God has given a son to us, Isaiah 9, 6.
Hey Calvary Kids, welcome to another edition of our game show, and today everyone gets to play. If your family is interested in playing one of our games, feel free to email me at the email address listed here, and we'll get you signed up for a future week. Hi friends! Who's ready to open some Christmas presents? Okay, so these aren't actual presents that you can hold or take home, but I still think this will be fun. You're going to see a present on the screen. You're going to have a few seconds to guess what the gift is before all of the wrapping paper is torn away and the time runs out. So, as soon as you think you know what it is inside the wrapping paper, stand up and shout out your answer. Everybody got it? All right, let's see our first present. All right, what do you think this first present could be? Remember, stand up and shout it out if you think you know. Time's up. What is it? It's a bicycle. Do you know why bicycles can't wake up on Christmas morning? Because they are too tired. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, what do you think? this gift could be. Time's up! What is it? It's a teddy bear! Have you heard why teddy bears don't ever eat dessert? They're too stuffed! I wonder what this gift could be. Time's up! What is it? It's a basketball! I can't find my basketball, but I'm sure it's around. Oh boy, another present. What do you think it could be? Time's up! What is it? It's socks! Do you know why socks are so sad? Because they are always dealing with defeat. What do you think is inside this gift? Time's up! What is it? It's cash! Do you guys know where rivers keep their money? In the river bank. Oh, I wonder what's inside this present. Time's up! What is it? Oh, it's a puppy. Did you know dogs can help with home repairs? They're really good at roofing. What do you think this gift is? Time's up! What is it? It's a book! So, I read a good book the other day called Jokes from the Past. It was historical! Ooh, I wonder what this gift is. Time's up! Uh, what is it? It's shoes! My friend doesn't like to share his shoes with anyone. He prefers to be the sole owner. All right, this is our last one. Can you figure out what this gift is? Time's up! What is it? It's headphones! Do you know why sheep wear headphones? They like to be part of the herd. Well, that show was fun. Merry Christmas, everybody!
Dear God, I love this time of year. All the lights and the excitement of Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and having all the family around. Well, almost all of our family. Grandma Ellis wasn't going to be able to make it this year. She can't travel anymore. And Mom said it wouldn't be good if she was away for too long. The last time I saw her, I asked her what she wanted for Christmas. And she said to go to her church and see her friends. I asked Mom, and she asked Uncle Tony, and then we all pitched in. The church said it was okay. Her retirement home said it was okay. So, last Sunday, we did it. We picked her up and told her it was time for church. She was so excited. And then when we got to church and opened the doors, everyone was there for her. She said it was the greatest Christmas ever. And I think it wasn't just true for her. It was true for all of us. <laughs> Merry Christmas, God. Love, glory.
Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. We have so many reasons to celebrate, am I right? Christmas cookies, visiting with family you only see once a year, singing carols 24 seven, and of course, the presents. So, so, so much to celebrate, but you know, and I know, biggest reason to celebrate this holiday season. Bigger than the cookies and the songs and yes, even the presents. It's a story you've probably all heard before, but if you're like me, you never get tired of hearing it. So let me just grab a cookie, pull up a chair, and get ready for the amazing story of Christmas. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Less than a year before, the angel Gabriel had told Mary that she would have a baby. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great, the son of the Most High God. But instead of preparing their home for a brand new baby, Mary and her husband Joseph found themselves with different plans. <laughs> By order of Caesar, everyone must go at once to their hometown to be counted. Joseph's family came from the town of Bethlehem, many days' journey over rough roads. We can't go anywhere right now. You're about to have a baby. I can have a baby in Bethlehem just as well as right here. Mary and Joseph likely knew the words of the prophet Micah, recorded hundreds of years before. Bethlehem. You might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. Well, all right. I'll pack the swaddling clothes. The journey was difficult, but at last, Mary and Joseph neared Bethlehem. My Aunt Lydia will have a room for us, or Cousin Eli. Is Bethlehem always this busy? No, it's usually, you know, how still we see thee lie. I guess everyone's come home. There's Aunt Lydia's. Unfortunately, none of Joseph's relatives had any room to spare. Terribly sorry, but my house is already packed to the rafters with your third cousins. It was the same everywhere Mary and Joseph checked. I don't have one single cubit of space where someone hasn't already plunked a sleeping bag. Joseph, we just need a place. Now hold your horses. I mean, your donkey. And, uh, well, if you want to stay there too, um, well, it's yours. Oh, no, we couldn't. We'll take it. Mary and Joseph settled in with the animals in lots of clean, fresh straw. At least it's warm. And soon, Mary's baby was born. Is he supposed to be so wrinkly? <laughs> Every new baby looks like that. He's perfect. Mary wrapped her baby up tightly in clean strips of cloth and laid him on fresh straw in the animal's feeding trough. Mary and Joseph weren't the only ones up late that night. In the field outside of Bethlehem, a ragtag group of shepherds were taking care of their sheep. It's so quiet out here. How do you stay awake? Well, whatever you do, don't count the sheep. Suddenly, light blazed into the darkness. A brilliant angel appeared. I'm awake, I'm awake. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Well, bless my soul. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I'm telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. As the shepherds gazed in awe, an entire angel choir from heaven filled the sky with glorious song. 
May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Then, just as suddenly as they arrived, the angels disappeared. The sky grew dark, and the stars shimmered faintly again. Wow, that doesn't usually happen. Should we go to Bethlehem? <laughs> you bet. The Lord himself just told us. Leaping up, the shepherds headed across the rough fields for the little town of Bethlehem. I see a light! There at the edge of town! Out of breath, the shepherds arrived at the place where Mary and Joseph were staying. What should we do? Go ahead and knock, young'un. A man with tired eyes and a big smile opened the door. Is this... Uh, is, there, is there a baby here in a manger? How did you know? Big choir of angels. <laughs> okay then, come right in. Inside, a woman knelt beside the rough feeding trough. <laughs> she turned as the shepherds entered, careful not to crowd. He's just like a baby lamb. It's all just like the angel said. The shepherds were so excited that when they left, they couldn't keep the news to themselves, but shouted it everywhere. Praise God. He's given us a savior. A brand new baby, right here in Bethlehem. Everyone who heard the shepherds was amazed, but Mary kept everything that had happened in her heart like a wonderful treasure. In the beginning, when God said, let there be light, he already knew that one day the world would need to be rescued. Because the world can be dark sometimes. People can be hurtful to one another. Sickness can shut things down. Where can we turn when the world gets dark? The shepherds watching over their flocks at night over 2,000 years ago may have wondered the same thing. And then the angels came and their glory shone all around. They spoke of good news, of great joy that would be for all the people. God had sent a savior, a baby, but no ordinary baby. This was God's own son, and he would grow up to teach people a better way to live. He would perform miracles and heal people who were sick and hurting. He would give his life to save the lost and broken. This baby, born on a dark night in Bethlehem, was the light of the world. Jesus is the reason we can truly be alive. He's the reason we celebrate. So this Christmas, while you're singing songs, gathering with your family, and opening presents, remember this one thing. Celebrate because God sent a savior. I told you it was a bigger reason to celebrate than the presents you get. Jesus was already God's biggest present. Merry Christmas! I hope you have a wonderful celebration. Sit, Zoe, sit. Good dog.